Hello Rick. Okay, so this is a character that um, I've been working on as part of a new course that I've got coming out on um, anatomical character design inside ZBrush, which is going to be a massive course. Um, this is just um, part of it. So I've roughly just put in some detail because I'm not up to that far on the course yet. Uh, just to show you, so I've put some high res detail in there. I've got the Dynamesh on to, uh, sorry it's not very good at the moment, uh, it's not finished. Uh, I've got my resolution on 880, so it's dynameshed and high resolution. Okay, so uh, to actually capture detail in a retopologized uh, piece of um, topology, what you can do is use this method. Now, there's a few different ways we could do this. We could take a base mesh. We could um, we could retopologize this basically, and then we could take it into another program. Uh, where it doesn't rely so much on the amount of quads or polygons to project the detail such as um, a substance painter so you could do a low res and you don't have to worry too much about the spread of um, topology over the model because it will still capture it, it bakes it from this high res one onto the low res one and to be honest that's what professionals are using today but so you run into problems with if you're doing hand topology on this and you've got big quads here yeah big topology quads here and then you've got very small ones here because when you start subdividing it um, the tight ones will become very detailed and the spread of the polygons on the ones that you've hand done that are bigger uh, has less detail being projected across to it so what you have to do you can still do it in zbrush but you have to just make sure that all your quads are even so even around the high detail areas such as the eyes and the mouth etc or even the eyebrows here so you need to make sure they're evenly quadded to capture all that detail. So I always find the best way of doing it is actually to use Zed Remesher, which is in here. So if I've got my base here, don't worry about these tools at the bottom, these are just creation tools. All right, so um, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna duplicate this one out. I'll just label this one for you now. I'm just gonna call it um, da, um, high, high res. Dynamesh, okay, and then this duplicate that I've just called, I'm going to call it um, low, okay. So turn off the high one, come on to the low one because we're now going to retopologize this again. This goes with any tools that you've got in here, and we're going to go down to our can turn off Dynamesh for starters, and we're going to come down to our Z Remesher. I'm going to set a target count, I'm going to set a target count of about 5,000 on here. And I'm going to hit the Z remesh. Now I've left adaptive on so it kind of works out to the size of this. And I haven't got poly group, even though I've got groups in here, I could turn, let me turn the line off. Uh, I could turn keep groups, but I'm not bothered about that. All right, so I'm not going to turn that on. So I've got all this set. This is just using ZBrush 2019 standard algorithm. I'm not pressing Alt when I click the Z remesh or anything. I'm going to click this and see the result I get. So it's basically going to go through this model and it's going to try and lower the poly count. Obviously, we we'll lose a detail, but it will try and go with the flow of the topology. So we should hopefully get some nice edge loops around the mouth and nose. Uh, now, there is nothing beats doing a hand retopology re using like the rigging and topology tools inside ZBrush, which I'm not going to go into. Uh, nothing beats that. Um, or taking it into an external program such as Maya and creating your base mesh and bring it in projecting detail from there but Z Remesher is getting better and better all the time and could be considered using you could use it for production so here we have it all we have is we have a we have a lower mesh we um, have captured kind of that topology see the edge loops around here not so good on the on the eyes um, but it's giving us good flow around here, around here, around the head, around the ears. That all looks good. If you're not happy, you can, of course, press the Control Z to go back. And you could actually use some guides to try and guide ZBrush where you want that topology to flow. So I wasn't going to go into this, but I will. So press B and G on your keyboard. Oops, sorry. Um, what's it called? Uh, 
Z remesh guides. So Z and Z remesh guides here. Okay, so I've left on symmetry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, okay, well, I want ZBrush to give me nice edge loops around the um, eyes. So I've put a loop around there. And I want it to give me good edge loops around here. And I'd also like it to give me maybe an edge loop around the nose as well, if it possibly could. So let's put something in here. Like that. Remember, these are guides just to try and guide ZBrush um, how much it should follow. And we're going to go around the ears. We should did a pretty good job last time anyway. Okay. And I probably want the flow to flow around the neck. So you don't have to meet up. You can just tell it where you want it to flow. And you can even go from an edge and go, right, okay, I want it to flow around there as well. You know, you're, you're basically telling it what to do here around there and meet there so the more lines you put in there the more you're controlling zbrush to kind of work now you probably want to do a mask around here it's a general way of working so you can come around here and link that up so you've got something like that now down here you've got the curve pull so you can tell it to you know try and go closer to those curves by increasing this value so i'll put it on like 70 and I'll just hit that Z remesh again. And I'm hoping now it will give me a nice flow using those curves as guides to drop the topology in. Now I know that this is, I'm just going over in more, more kind of advanced techniques with you, but you wanted to know it, so here we go. So let it um, zoom through that. I'll just pause the video whilst it's um, thinking about it. And then we'll have a look at the resulting topology. All right, what we got? So. Now you can see it's actually gone round the nose. It's tried to go round the here. It's given us this nice thing round here. So it's actually tried to work to those guides um, and given us a fairly good result. So moving on from this, once you're happy, and obviously you run quite a few tests until you are happy, we've now got a low res base, okay? This res base has a poly count of 1,000 or 10,487. Uh, we got this one which is on 3.5 million so let's get the detail across let's divide so i'm going to hit this obviously you uv map it so i'm going to hit this and i'm going to take this up to level five i'm just going to check this with the damien standard uh, with a very small line and just make sure that it's going to capture enough detail that's not bad i might bring it up one more i'm going to have a look at my poly count on this so I'm up to 1 million. So it's not far off this. Um, well, actually, it's a, it is quite a long way off it. So I might. Remember, it times it by 4 each time you do it. So we'll be up to 1 million if I do another one. So what I might do is I might check it first. So I've got a high res, low res mesh. So I'm going to turn on. I'm active on the low poly one. And I'm going to turn on the high one. I'm going to come down to the project which is here now generally you don't have to change these settings but sometimes you might have to change that projection distance and that's the distance that it will try and work to to pull in or pull out of the model so i'm not clicking furthest outer or inner that's for inner projections outer projections or the furthest out and in so i'm not going to do that i'm not going to add a projection shell i'm just going to leave it on this i'm going to hit project all so it's going to take a little while because it's working it all out. We're going to see how much detail we grab. If we haven't got enough detail, I'm going to up the resolution and repeat what I just did. Now also, um, I'm following what you asked me to do. But um, in reality, when you're putting high frequency detail on a model, you should really have subdivided it and projected it before you started adding the detail on, yeah? So you should have had the low res mesh, you should have had it high, you should have projected just a sculpt of the high res dyna mesh. And then with the um, subdivided model, then you should ha add your high frequency detail, yeah? So that is something that you need to bear in mind. I wouldn't um, 
do all the high frequency detail using Dynamesh. I would get the model to an acceptable stage with a fair amount of detail, but I would finish off all your high frequency details once you've applied it to the retopology to retopologized model because you might also on that model want to use HD um, sculpting with the geometry as well so you want to have your base mesh all good so to do it like this um, I wouldn't normally I would I would do my projection before I've added my high frequency detail just so you know if there's major things you've got to pull in and push out that should have been done on the Dynamesh version yeah so you know you need to make sure that you've got it right before you start this process otherwise you need to go back to the Dynamesh model make your major form and your secondary form uh, changes before you then um, take it back do and follow these steps so that's just some a big thing to bear in mind when you're doing a character or any kind of modeling inside ZBrush make sure that you're you're not um, you're working on the actual mesh with your high frequency details high frequency being things like little wrinkles folds um, you know little bits in the skin anything any little moles those sort of things things that you're not pushing too far out or in to um, produce that detail because then you're working on the actual uh, subdivided model as opposed to trying to do it all like that now the exception comes if you are using an external program like uh, substance painter where then you can do what the hell you like and um, then project the detail because it's not reliant on the um, amount of uh, quads inside the actual model itself if that makes sense okay so here we have um, the finished version here so if I turn this one off I've captured pretty much all that detail. I'm just going to put it on solo so I can jump between them. So you can see there's no real difference. There's probably the very slightest difference. So I would up the resolution if I had to. But as you can see here, I've captured all that detail. And I've got all that detail in there. I can't see much of a difference at all. You know, obviously you'd have to do a bit of clean up around the eyes. Um, I would do the eyes separately normal. But you can see now I've got this. Um, so that's fine. You know, I've got this as a low resolution model as well. Let's take it down there. So you can see it's low res. And I can also bring it up to the high res version as well. And let's just see if any ha anything's happened. Well, I've stepped up, stepped down. It's slightly more detail you know again this was one million mod one two three four five six seven actually it's ten million so I'm well at well over this 3.5 so I've captured all that detail comfortably so that's how you do it basically Rick um, hopefully that's been of use for you so that is it Okay, so I think that should have helped you on what you need. Everything looks good. Of course, I could UV map this now, of course, as well, because I've got it all in here. So I could go and quickly do a map of that if I wanted to. going to my plug it wouldn't need the bottom actually Oop. I've got four poly groups there that's control W to unwrap that UV master by poly groups unwrap. Boom, boom, boom. That'll give me something like that. 
Oop, that's because it's got a thing. So I can go down and morph targets. Have a look at my oop. UV map, morph the UVs. It's good. And then of course I could apply the displacement map to that or a normal map from that. Create normal maps. Let's go with adaptive. So it'll capture the high map from the high um, subdivision levels into here, which of course then could be exported out and used in uh, Maya 3D Max or any other f application to render out from. Of course, you could paint it and then create the poly um, the poly paint data as well as a map. Take it into other any other program now because I've got UVs on it. Of course, I could take this low res version out into Substance Painter and the high resolution Dynamesh version and I could create um, the um, detail from that as well. So there's more of an advanced techniques, but you want to know how to do it in ZBrush. So there you have it. So there you can see the map has been created. So um, yeah, and you can do the same for displacement maps as well if you want to. So that's how you do it. Um, hopefully that's helped you, Rick. Cheers, mate, bye.